Hi, everybody. Father Bill Holsinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, today I'd like to share with you the, the most difficult words Jesus has ever spoken. Or at least it's for me the most difficult words to ever read and listen that came from the mouth of Jesus Christ. What are those words? Well, this is Thursday on the uh, December, excuse me, September 12th. And we heard this, and I'm going to summarize part of it, because this comes from Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 38. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear I say, love your enemies. Okay, right there. I'm done. I'm cooked. There's much more that he says. Love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless those, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Wow. We all have enemies. I think back just yesterday, which was September 11th, because I'm recording this on a Thursday, September 12th, I am thinking about the events that happened so far, so long ago, 23 years ago. And I remember my anger and a sense of huge loss. No, I didn't know anybody in the World Trade Center. I had been there. I even took my mom there, and it was an amazing thing to be there. But to have then planes fly into those structures and kill so many people, the anger that I had was mixed with this great sorrow. I guess the anger is because of why people would do such things. Why would people have such enemies that they would want to kill them and how, why do we have enemies personally like we all have somebody that we probably consider an enemy and if not think a little harder because it doesn't mean that you want to kill them maybe you just you don't ever want to be around them because of whatever fill in the blank in a sense they're against you an enemy is a person that's against us, but we like, we commonly think of enemy as someone who's going to attack us or do some physical harm. And that can happen. And in fact, when that does happen, like 9-11, we're tempted to strike out and to retaliate. Now, I'm not trying to get into a debate about just war theory. But I just want to make it personal because clearly I mean, we have the right to defend ourselves against an aggressor. But we're called to love our enemies. Our aggressors may not want to kill us. Then again, they may just want to really make our lives miserable. And who knows how far that goes. But I know for myself that I don't like my enemies. I... They're my enemies because I maybe hate them. And that's not what God is calling me to do. Jesus isn't saying that at all, that I should be hating them. He says I should be praying for them. I should be loving them. Love your enemies. This is towards the end. Love your enemies. That's hard enough. And he says, and do good to them. Is that not the hardest thing? Think about who you are angry at right now. Think about who's hurt you. When I think about that and I have anger for them, I have to do a gut check. I am not called to return evil for evil. I am called to, as Jesus says, return good. Do good instead of evil. Pray for those who persecute us. Pray for the person that persecutes you. That might be a little easier. That might be a little step closer to loving our enemies. Maybe forgiving us, like cutting off the debt they owe us that because of what they've done has hurt us. And we're owed an apology. We're saying, no, I'm going to cut that off. Forgiveness is the, re the cutting off 
of a debt owed to a person or owed to us, let's say. I forgive someone because they've wronged me. These are hard, hard words. So in, in light of 9-11, I was really angry at these terrorists and other people who'd want to kill us. And I was able to move from that to praying for the conversion of their heart. Because clearly, that's an evil act that was perpetrated. But I also have to admit that in my heart, I may have perpetrated another evil act by wishing them dead. It doesn't have to be uh, a bloody thing. It can be just, I wish them non-existing. This is what I might do in my mind to just any enemy that I have. We all have them. Satan is the greatest enemy. And his dominions, his evil, wicked demons. But for us, as Christians, we're called to be people of life and love. Remember last week when Deacon Brett pre preached, he talked about how when we let go of our own uh, self-righteousness or when we admit our own mistakes, when we let go and realize that we need God, that I can't do all this, then finally I can be free. That's the deal. So Christ wants to set us free. And when we harbor evil thoughts, when we harbor, when I harbor hate for my enemy, it only hurts me and maybe the people I am around because it, I bother them because of my hatred. And so moving to away from hatred to praying for your enemy is a good step. Forgiving them, stopping the debt that they owe us or they owe you or me is a step. Loving them is the ultimate step. And I'm not sure for me if I am capable of doing that on my own with my fallen nature and my uh, desire, possibly for revenge for things that's happened to me. But I am. This is not a recommendation by Jesus. It's a commandment. To you who, I, who can hear, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you and bless those who curse you. In other words, let us then ask for the grace to be able to be open to God's power that grace that he can give us can help us to do amazing things, miraculous things, like loving your enemy. I think actually that's the only way we can is with God's grace. So my friends, think about where you have someone in your heart that you hold a grudge against or you're angry against or they, you know, and truth have harmed you. And ask God to help you to love them. You actually ask God to bless them. Yes, you can ask God to turn their hearts. God knows the fullness of their hearts. We don't. And turn their hearts to him so that they will know love. To repent of whatever it is they need. But then guess what? I need to do that too when I'm praying those prayers. I need to repent of my sins. I need to repent of the evil thoughts that I have harbored for them. Because it's weird, the economy of evils, it just multiplies. Evil multiplies more evil. And we have to stop it. And the way to stop it is somebody has to love their enemies. And you know what who did perfectly? Jesus. On the cross. While he's being whipped, he knew it was coming. And he even said from the cross, forgive them, Father, if they do not know what they're doing. And so, Lord, forgive us for what we are doing sometimes, that we do not know what we're doing and we're harming each other. 
help us then when we are a victim of any kind that we would love that enemy or that perpetrator. Let us together pray also for those who are victims of hatred that we can love them and and encourage them to choose the good, to repent of sin. But instead of just looking outside, let's start with ourselves. I start with me so that I can somehow live this reading out. Love your enemies and do good to them. Then your reward will be great and you'll be called children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful, is referring to God. For he is himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed down, shaken down and overthrown will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. I'll leave you with those thoughts. Let's pray that we all can love our enemies. God bless. Bye-bye.